Hi, how's it going? So yeah, I figured it was about time to do a little studio tour thing just to you know show y'all what I what I'm working with here. I'll divide it into categories. You'll be able to see those down there if I can figure out how to split it up into those parts that you see, you know. And uh, this is by no means a real studio at all. I, I don't have uh, really any of the real equipment that I would need. I have some of it, but you know, it's never gonna be a real studio or anything. I I don't have too much to work with here, it's just my bedroom, so yeah, let's get into it. Alright, for instruments, first we got this bad boy. This was my first ever guitar. I've uh, put a couple changes in it. I obviously repainted the pickguard, um, put a kill switch in, that was fun. And then I also shielded the electronics cavity inside, which uh, didn't do too much to help the buzz, but uh, it's a Squire Strat, so it's never going to be good, but yeah. First guitar. Next is the workhorse guitar and the one that I take to college. I believe it's a Jackson JS22 Monarch. Yeah, this thing's pretty good. I also put a couple changes in here. I shielded that cavity. That mod didn't really end up working, so I'll have to look into why, but I did that a long time ago. Also, push-pull for a coil split. That one was cool. And I want to figure out a way to put a kill switch on here, too, but uh, that might be hard. Next! This one. This, I really like this one. 24 frets. It's my only 24 fret guitar. Uh, Floyd Rose. It's kind of a uh, pain to deal with, but it's fine. This is Jackson JS22 Dinky or something? Or maybe it wasn't 22. Um, humbucker, single coil, single coil. Yeah, this one's 5-way selector and all that. I, I really like this one. Can't complain at all. It looks pretty cool, too. Next is my acoustic guitar. It's missing a strap button, but that's the only thing wrong with it. It also seems a little quiet sometimes, but, you know, it works. It's an acoustic guitar. That's what I uh, need it to be. And now the bass. I got this one uh, about a year ago, actually. Um, a little less than a year ago, maybe. Jackson JS3Q Spectra. It has five knobs and a switch. So many options for a... Uh, sound. It's, you can split the coils, you can do active or passive, um, active three band EQ. It's really sweet uh, and it was only like four or five hundred dollars. This is a nice instrument. Now for a couple more miscellaneous ones, I have a ukulele that I don't play too much, but um, it's so small that I'd be able to take it to college and maybe I can uh, start writing some stuff on here. That would be cool. This is my mom's clarinet from when she was in uh, elementary school, I think. I haven't started too much on this. I've made noises. They're not very musical noises, though. I will be working on this, and maybe you'll see it in the video in a year or two. I have this thing. Uh, that needs tuning, I think. It, I've not used it since some kind of class when I was younger. I forgot exactly what it was, but yeah, I have this. And a kid's xylophone. Yeah. Uh, also haven't used this in a long time, but I have it too. And then uh, there's this box of miscellaneous instruments. There's a recorder, um, there's a bunch of random percussion things like shakers, a couple wood blocks and stuff, kazoos, uh, and Thomas the Tank Engine whistle. Yeah. And then I have this as a keyboard, uh, Casio WK6600. It's a pretty nice keyboard. It's got a lot of sounds and it's... You know, it works. And then uh, this is my drum kit. Really not much. Uh, Gretsch Blackhawk, I believe it is. Um, got it used for about 400 with some cymbals that were absolutely horrible. Uh, so those I all replaced. These are also not great. Um, this one has a chunk taken out of it. Um, but then this is my only good cymbal. It's Sentent which is a really good company. I uh, got a good deal on this one because I know someone who knows the uh, CEO or someone really high up uh, in the company. But yeah, sentence symbols are really cool. I, I need to replace these tom heads. I will be doing that spring break probably. Uh, I need to load them up with moon gels to make them even sound okay. Those are, they say Gretsch, they're probably just the stock heads in all honesty. And then that's Remo. Uh, I got a cowbell, that's kind of cool. Um, and then that little popcorn snare over there, also Gretsch. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Next up is uh, amps and pedals. I don't have too many pedals, but I got a few. Uh, so I'll just show them, I suppose. The Boss DS1, my first ever pedal, only because it's cheap. Uh, doesn't sound great, but you can get, you know, you can use it. I used it for the rock band class that I think I've mentioned a couple times on here. Um, you know, it works. That's just about all it does. I should use this one way more, but to be honest, um, 
I've only found a couple cool tones that I've liked out of it. The MXR Power 50 Tom Morello pedal, and Tom Morello is, you know, one of my favorite guitarists of all time, probably top two, uh, only behind Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, this is a cool pedal. It was kind of pricey, so I'll have to use it a little more, but, um, yeah. And then a uh, classic Crybaby Wah pedal. Can't go wrong with this. A couple more miscellaneous things. Um, my uncle handmade this sustain pedal for me that goes with the keyboard there. It also works, and I like it a lot. It's, you know, lightweight, serviceable. And then also, there's this thing which controls my amp. It's just a foot switch. Fender GTX 7, I believe. Um, you can change presets, change effects, all that stuff. It's got a tuner built in and a looper as well. And that foot switch controls this amp, the Fender GT100. My first good amp, and, you know, arguably my only good amp, because <laughs> my first one sucked. Yeah, this thing's cool. It's got so many effects and all that. Uh, I will probably start using it less just because it's kind of big and I have a an amp modeling software that I really like I'm going to talk about later. And bass amp that rarely gets used. Usually when I play bass, I just have it go straight into the interface and then I add whatever effects I want in the DAW. But yeah, I have a bass amp, use it for jamming if I have a couple bandmates over or something. Next up is what I'm going to call uh, physical recording gear or something like that. So to start off that category, right here, the uh, MXL770, I think. It's about a hundred bucks. It works. Sounds alright from what I can tell, but I'm no expert, of course. We're not going to talk about fixing the shock mount with the rubber bands. That's all I had at the moment. But yeah, this... Uh, Nice little condenser microphone. And then I got this thing, uh, the PV, uh, PVI-100. It was cheap, like $20 or something like that. But it also works. It's got a switch, which I like. Dynamic microphone. Nothing too fancy there. I bet you see these everywhere. Mic stands, I have this Boom 1. That's kind of obvious. I also have this one that I got very recently. I haven't used it too much, but it will come in handy, especially for drums. In this category, my audio interface, the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, third generation, I believe. I wish I had more instrument inputs, but it's fine. I don't really have... I should have something that works with the line inputs, but the keyboard, I think the line outs are broken because they're coming out at instrument level, but anyway, yeah. Uh, only two inputs for XLR or instruments, which is kind of unfortunate. It's a solid little interface. I've had it for uh, getting close to three years now. Now I'll talk about software for a little bit. For my DAW, the most important one arguably, I've been using Ableton 11 uh, Lite version, which is free. You only get eight tracks, which sucks. So that's why I'm going to try to transition to Reaper, which is technically not free. So don't treat it like it's free, because it's not. But they do give you 60 days free, and then the license is really cheap, like $60 for a lifetime or something. So yeah, I'm going to be moving over to that. That guitar software I mentioned earlier is Amplitube 5 Max. I just got it a couple weeks ago, and it's really sweet. It's I got a big deal on it too. It was I think it's six hundred dollars originally. I got it for one hundred on a sale. So yeah, I might not have gotten it uh, originally, but um, had to snag it at that price, you know. I also use a whole bunch of free plugins that I found on the internet, as well as Ableton stock plugins. I'll roll some uh, footage or a picture of a list of the plugins I have. But yeah, for a uh, broke college student, the free ones do just fine. You know, I'm not a pro, so I don't really need pro stuff. Especially the Ableton stock ones, though. You get a lot of options. I will miss those when I uh, move over to Reaper, for sure. And then for recording, streaming, uh, screen recording, that type of thing, I use OBS Studio, which is too good to be free, but it is free, so... Yeah, I can't recommend that enough. And then also, why not throw this in? Uh, DaVinci Resolve is my video editor. It's also... Uh, really good, especially for something that's free. It does slow down my computer a lot. My computer's not even that bad, you know, it's new, it's got a good amount of processing power, and it's still pretty laggy, so uh, it's a big application. I maybe should have thrown this in the amps category. Um, the speakers I use at home are a little bit too big to take to college. Logitech, it's... I forget, the, I forget exactly what it is. It's basically just computer speakers plugged into a small subwoofer. I'll, uh... There, I don't know if you can see that, but, um, yeah, there's one, and maybe there's the other. 
they sound okay, especially when plugged into that thing, if you can see that. Definitely no replacement for studio monitors, though. Also in the miscellaneous category, this webcam, it advertised itself as HD, but it's really not. Uh, it was on sale, so I didn't waste too much money, but probably not going to use that for that much. Also, I have a bucket of sheet music down there. I need to sort that very badly, and then a uh, nightmare of cables back there. So the big thing, the keyboard, same one from home, is here. I use it as a MIDI controller, but also just as a keyboard with all the presets it's got. There's the pedal. I brought my wah pedal. I uh, have started the transition to Reaper, which is nice. I'm really liking it so far, and no 8-track limit, which is super sweet. There's my audio interface, too. And I didn't bring those speakers that I had at home, just a bit too bulky, but I do have that. It doesn't sound great, but it works if I... I'm tired of wearing headphones. Speaking of headphones, I just got these um, a couple days after I moved back into my dorm here. The Sony MDR7506. They're alright. I'm used to things with a little bit more bass, but um, these are supposed to be really accurate, so I will adjust to those and start mixing with them. I also have that amp back there, um, which I left here over winter break. I'm probably not going to use it because I have that AmpliTube software, but yeah, it's there if I want to use it. And there's the webcam. The microphone setup is a little cursed. Actually, it's incredibly, unbelievably cursed. Um, so yeah, my clothes drawer doesn't close all the way anymore because that's the only place uh, where I could put the mic stand. So, uh, yeah, I can't close that, but uh, at least I have a microphone. And there's Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Brought the black guitar that you've seen in this room before, and new for this semester, I also brought my bass. Don't have a good place to keep it right now, so it's just chilling in the case. I also have the real book, which is cool. And then over here at my other desk, which I use mostly for schoolwork, not music, uh, drumsticks and a practice pad. Then I also have this MIDI controller, which I'm not using right now because I only have one um, MIDI cord and it's being used for that guy. And then I just have a ton of cords on my bedpost here. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'll just use this opportunity to say, um, a couple months ago now, I hit 100 subscribers. I have 111 at this moment, I think, which is really cool. That one uh, November rain video got like 13,000 views, which was a short, which makes sense. I got like 45 subscribers from that one video, which is just nuts. But yeah, road to 200, I guess, to use the cringy overused saying. It would be cool if we hit 150 by the end of this semester, so early May, but uh... If not, you know, I'll get there eventually. I just uh, do this for fun, so uh, if you want to stick around and watch more stuff, feel free. I would appreciate it. But if not, I understand completely my uh, production value isn't exactly the, the greatest right now. There's a big light over my head. Uh, I should have thought about that earlier. Oh well. But anyway, that's it. Have a nice day.